Hello and welcome to ShowMeAcademy.com. In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to create custom formulas in Microsoft Excel 2007. Adding formulas to a spreadsheet is one of the most powerful features that you can use. It basically allows you to let the spreadsheet do the hard work for you. Specifically, it allows the spreadsheet to do a lot of the mathematical operations for you that you would otherwise have to manually calculate on a cell-by-cell, column-by-column, or row-by-row -row basis. Let me illustrate for you what I'm talking about. Here in this spreadsheet of NFL data, we have some columns here. The first one is for the number of games played. And then this one over here is for the total points scored by that team during the season. And then this column is the points per game. Now, logically, you can figure that the points per game is going to be equal to the value of this column divided by the value of this column. So for example, the New England Patriots scored 589 total points. They did that over the course of 16 games. So 589 divided by 16 equals 36.8, which you see is the value that we have in points per game. However, the values that currently sit in the spreadsheet are very static values. They're almost what I would refer to as dumb values, meaning that None of the values are tied to any of the numbers in any of the other columns or rows. Let me explain to you what I'm talking about. If I go here and I want to change this value, let's say I change it drastically to something like 200 and hit enter. Now, once I do that, obviously my points per game value is now thrown out of whack because the points per game no longer reflects the accurate number that would be represented by E2 divided by C2. Instead, I went and dropped this number down drastically, but I did not go and recalculate the number in this column. But we shouldn't have to recalculate this manually every time we change these values. There should be a way for us to denote in the spreadsheet that the value of this cell is going to be equal to the value of this cell divided by the value of this cell. And luckily, there is, in fact, a way for us to do that. So I'm going to click on this cell here, and first of all, I'm going to type equals, the equal sign. This basically tells us that I'm about to put in a formula. And then I'm going to put in the coordinates for the cell that I'm trying to uh, include in the equation. So for example, in this case, I want to have E2 because E2 is where this 200 value sits. So I'll type in E2. <clears throat> Notice once I do that, this value here gets outlined with this blue line. And then I'm going to tell it that I want it to be divided by. So I'm going to use the forward slash. That's the that's the item that we're going to use, the character that we're going to use to denote division. And we're going to have E2 divided by C2. And I'm going to hit enter. And now you see that my points per game changed. It changed to 12.5 because 200 divided by 16 equals 12.5. What's more important now is that this, this formula is now dynamic. So if this value changes, let's say, for example, to 400, the value in this cell automatically updated because we scored twice as many points, so our points per game must be twice as high. Once again, I can multiply this by 2, <clears throat> and now our points per game have risen again. Or I can change the number of games played as well. If I change this to say they, they played 32 games. Now, it again affects my points per game. The point being, being that the value of this cell is directly tied to the value of this cell in this cell. Because I've set up here in my formula, which I can now see up here in the formula bar, that <clears throat> it will always be E2 divided by C2. Now, there are other things that you can do as well, aside from doing division. For example, in this cell, let's say that we want to do equals E3 because I'm going to stay on the, on the same row of data, times, and we're going to use the asterisk symbol to denote multiplication, E3 times C3. And now what we see is the product of E3 and C3, which in this case happens to be 6,960. If we want to do addition, we can do that quite easily. We'll say equals E4 plus C4. <clears throat> and now we have the sum of E4 and C4. And then also we can do equals E5 minus C5. And 
the difference between 379 and 16 is 363. And you can always go back and look at these formulas as well if you just click on the cell and look up here in your formula bar. For example, right now I've clicked on this cell, and this cell contains nothing but static or, or dumb data because you can see up here in the formula bar there's an actual numerical value stuck here in the formula bar. But if I, if I move up here, you can see that this says 363. But up in the formula bar, it shows me that it's actually calculated by figuring out the value of E5 minus C5. And as I go through each one of these other cells, it shows me a different formula that's associated with that cell. You can also do um, slightly more complex uh, algebraic uh, calculations here as well. For example, <clears throat> if I said equals E33 times F33 minus C33. <clears throat> now what happens <clears throat> is that with these parentheses, and when I've selected this, I go back up to look at my formula bar to see what it looks like. With my parentheses, it first evaluates the innermost parentheses first, just like we learned back in in, in math and algebra class in school. So it's going to come up first with the difference between F33 and C33, and it's going to multiply that value by E33, because again, it works from the inside of the parentheses and works its way out. And you can have any number of different parentheses. In fact, I can go back and I can change this formula now, and I can say plus G33 minus H33. We get a new value. So here you see our, our formula starting to get more complex. We're taking the difference between G33 and H33 first, and then we're adding it to C33 and subtracting that from F33, and then finally we're multiplying it by E33. The point is not that you have to understand what this particular formula is doing. In fact, this particular formula is doing nothing too logical, but the point is that you can build any type of formula that you need that can at times get fairly complex. Now you don't have to just put these these references to other cells in here either. You can just put hard values. You can say for example that this has to be, I'm going to hit equals, E33 plus 50. So that will always be this value which is E33 plus 50. If I go here and change that to 100 now this value below it shows up as 150. And when I take and drag this value here, like this, it's actually going to increment this. Here it was E33 plus 50. Now it's E34 plus 50, which is the cell above it. Here it's E35 plus 50, which is the cell above it. And here it's E36 plus 50. So you see that when you click and drag these values, it tries to assume that you always want to keep your formula with the same relative cell values. So in other words, if you had a formula that was always taking the cell above it and adding 50 to it, as we've done here, it will assume that when you copy it down, you will want to keep taking the cell above it and, and add 50 to it. So every time we go to one of these new formulas that we've copied, it's E37 plus 50, E38 plus 50, E39 plus 50, etc. There's a lot more that you can get into, form, into with formulas, but I want to show you the basics of how to create addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and how to group those with uh, parentheses as well. Thank you for using this tutorial. This is presented on showmeacademy.com.